And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. We give her this segment just to talk about whatever she sees in the gardens and then shares it across well, basically all of Northern Arizona. This broadcast over eight different towers, terrestrial airwaves, traditional terrestrial. airwaves. And of course, <laughs> the internet, which is not terrestrial. That's in wherever, the cloud. Wherever the, the cloud the is, ethernet. but it's not earth bag based. <laughs> So it's kind of and all everything in between. We've got over 20,000 downloads just on our podcast. Wow. So it's it's trendy. We have over a million downloads on our YouTube channel. So a lot of these are uploaded yeah. to YouTube and then come back. So it's uh, people that are looking for local garden advice for mm -hmm. the mountains of Arizona can find it easily here at Waters Garden Center. <laughs> there you go. It is true. We're kind of in a weird little pocket here. It and it is very different. If you're from different parts of the country and you come here. It's a it's a change. I talked to just helping us someone from New Jersey. Said, New How Jersey. do you find New Jersey from New Jersey <laughs> from here? So uh, that's a terrible East Coast Horrible. accent. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but uh, I said, how'd you find it? Well, I've got family here. So oh. There's that connection okay. somehow. Yeah. And how they get here? Well, she married a guy that was raised <laughs> here, and so she came. What? So it's kind of this. Oh, okay. We're known throughout the country, but we're not like the East Coast. It is. Ooh more acidic, mm -hmm. uh, they warm up slower, lower altitude, uh, we're more, more alkaline, dry, uh, we know it's not dry right now, but it will be, <laughs> May and June is kind of our hardest months to right. grow things, because mm -hmm. it's, it's hot, southwest it's wind, 10% yeah. humidity, things have brand new growth coming out, so it's getting to just the altitude, just the brightness, mm -hmm. the sun is more intense because there's less uh, atmosphere to kind of diffuse some of that right. so that makes a difference for our california folks so they're Definitely. growing those japanese maples in full sun there here we don't do that it's more shade so you'll learn those lessons right. that's the that's the goal of this show mm -hmm. is to help you make less mistakes right. so you're making mistakes in the right direction put it that way. <laughs> okay and planting the right things Definitely. So speaking of planting the right things, so we are, we're going to talk about our spring blooming trees. Oh, so Time we're perfect. Yeah. almost there where a lot of those trees are going to be showing off their, their spring yeah. blossoms. Um, so to me, the premium one that I always love is the red buds. Red buds are those ones that typically usually have that really dark pink fuchsia color to yeah. it. Uh, they're probably one of the first ones to bloom. Yeah, or, they're right up there. So okay. the very first I always thought of was purpley plum okay. instead of lighter pink yeah. with the purple foliage. That's true. They're probably first. And then it's they're right after that. Yeah. It's a serious, then then Bradford pears. It just goes right down the line. It's like right. an eruption. Yeah. So, but they're just they're so dramatic because they just really catch your eye because the color is just so striking on them. Um, but there is one red bud that actually has white blooms. Get out of here. I did not know that. Yeah. So the the vanilla twist. Oh, that's interesting. So okay. it's kind of a really cool tree because it does the white blooms and it does the green leaves after it blooms. But it also has the twist part of it. So it's not just your straight out branches. So it's boring. Kind of curly branches that kind of weep down. So it has a lot of uh, interest just within the tree. You want your trees twisted just like your people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. That was terrible. So yeah, just a little bit different having that white blossom on there. Uh, Ruby Falls That's is pretty. another one that weeps. It's a weeping red bud, uh, dark pink blossoms, but it has kind of the purpley leaves on it, kind of like the Merlot has the yeah. purple leaves. So those two are a little unique. Uh, you know, it's not your standard Oklahoma, Eastern Minnesota. Um, the other one that's really unique is the flamethrower which has the same dark pink blossom, but the leaves as they emerge on the branch come out different colors. So you'll get orange and purple and green. So yeah. it's just a very unique tree. So red buds are a true native. There's, there's a variety that grows wild here, mm -hmm. just out in the forest. It gets bright pink, has a little bit smaller leaf to it. So the Mexican or Western red bud, mm -hmm. it does well, which means it and all of its cousins grow well here. So this, this is a plant that grows throughout Northern North America. And so when we're finding it's so hardy, so easy to grow that we're finding new ways to cross pollinate right. and, and make new varieties. And these are some of the new varieties, latest, mm -hmm. greatest out like flamethrower. You're only going to find it here. So mm -hmm. we, we've, we secured just a few because it's a brand new introduction, but that uh, bright flower with that 
new yellow gold growth with the red tips. It's really cool. It's really neat, but super hardy in a dry climate. Mm -hmm. And the beauty with red buds, they don't get that big. True. So even for the smaller uh, yards, mm -hmm. smaller lots that are that are coming Good out, size for it. you can find, you could put that in the front or backyard, even mm -hmm. just off a patio in a container mm -hmm. and it would be fine. Interesting fact, they're from the pea family. Yes. And you can actually yeah. eat the flowers. You can. Edible very edible. Flowers. Very delicious. I don't know if you want to, but you could. No, I've eaten them. They're, they're, they're sweet. They're sweet tasting. Yeah. <laughs> Figures yeah. you would. Heart-shaped leaf, kind of yeah. about the size of, well, I don't know what that is. Bigger. A big post-it note. Is that good enough? <laughs> That'll How work. How do you describe that size? So I would say come in and check those all out because there's yeah. even more varieties than we've mentioned here. So yeah. you got to check those out. Um, I wanted to mention we got some multi-trunk uh, Canada Red Choke cherries Ooh, that's unusual very unusual have the multi trunk yeah. in it so they bloom white in the spring uh they leaf out kind of a they leaf out green and then they kind of turn to purple, purple. Yeah. as they mature a very drought hardy yeah. tree for here does very very well but we've gotten them in in the single trunks in the past it's the first time i've seen the multi trunks so it could be really pretty out in the yard that's another native mm -hmm. so that's one of the first ones you'll see a, a tree blooming white just out in the wild that's a choke cherry. Mm -hmm. So this is a variation of that. And usually they're single trunk to have multi, this large vase shaped, yeah. sh big shrub. Be great with a chase tree or some of these oh, yeah. uh, desert willows. Mm -hmm. Super. And once you get them established, yeah. they can go on their own. They're right. fine. Butterflies, hummingbirds love them. Mm -hmm. uh, birds. It's attractor to birds. It's a great yeah. plant for here. Right. They actually produce a fruit, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or am I wrong? Rarely. No, no. Okay. Rarely do they produce a fruit. Okay. So sometimes My bad. freakish spring, but <laughs> usually not. Same with purple leaf plums. Sometimes right. they can form a fruit, but generally uh, the frost will take them always. out. Yeah. Uh, crab apples. Yeah, that's so a good one. Crab apples are a beautiful tree for here. Um, we get the spring snow, which is a white one that is sterile. So if you don't want any crab apples at all, spring snow and it actually has a very nice fragrance to it yeah, as it well uh, but we also have perfect purple we have uh prairie fire um i think three or four different ones out yeah. there so they do produce a crab apple but it's not the old like your grandparents yeah. had crab apple it's very small great for the birds yeah they like it yeah my so i used to pick crab apples with my grandmother mm. up in the appalachian mountains uh so it makes me sound like a hillbilly or something. But anyway, uh, we packed, but it was a big, it was like a miniature apple. I mean, it was a big, and she'd make jams and preserves. We right. grew up in old orchards that were 200 years old. Mm -hmm. Pick these. These, we bred that fruit out so that's either ornamental, mm -hmm. very tiny, cute thing. Right. So it's got a bright red. We're, we're, we're producing it for small and bright colors mm -hmm. that the birds are attracted to, right. but they're not messy. Mm -hmm. Or we bred the, the, uh, um, the fruit all, out all together, like the snow drift or snow, whatever that Spring is. Snow. Spring snow, yes. <laughs> but crab uh, apples, I think, have the brightest of mm. all. It's a truly purple flower, purple yeah. uh, crab apple. I mean, it's bright. I mean, purple. It's intense. Pretty, pretty. The fall color is bright orange. Mm -hmm. When it turns in that fall, it's they've got extremes. They're just beautiful trees yeah. that with an umbrella shaped kind of a miniature. They don't shade get real tree big kind either, of look. Do no, they, they don't get a big. smaller tree. Yeah. yeah. And very tough. Very mm -hmm. easy. They take our, our our wind, they take our alkaline alkali our crummy soil. Yeah. So the most famous ones when they when they bloom downtown Prescott, there's yeah. a bunch of crab apples down there. Right. There will be a wave of customers coming in going, what is it? I want one. <laughs> oh, it's a crab apple. Well, no, it's not that. I'm like, no, I'm telling you. I that's I know what you're talking about. You. That's what they are. <laughs> yeah. So crab apples, but they're a good tree for here. Right. Yeah. Right. Easy to plant, easy to grow. Definitely. There's more than that. So, Lots but more. we're out of time. Mm -hmm. It is a good time to plant trees. Yeah. They're not, they're heavily budded, mm -hmm. starting, starting to show color. But now's the time when you want to put those in. Then I, I say right. the next month really oh, is definitely. ideal. Yeah. Ken Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, right back after this.